name is Miriam Driss. I'm a resident of the city of Snohomish and a free range librarian. And sitting with me is Alexander Babich. He is also a resident of Snohomish and actually um, is, was born in Serbia. And the reason we're here today is because Alexander has written this graphic book entitled My Name is Peter Babich from the village of Soviak. And what this is about is a portion of the Holocaust that many of us don't know about. We know about the six million Jews who've been murdered and we know about Hitler. But the Holocaust was also taking place in Serbia. And what was going on there is that the Croatians sided with the fascists and they decided that the Serbians, who were not Catholic like themselves but Orthodox, um, needed to be ethnically cleansed. And the way that they did that was that they murdered the adults and put the children in camps um, and uh, the plan was to forcibly convert the children to Catholicism. What we're going to do today is an interview um, and I'll start by asking some questions and Alexander will be answering them. Uh, and my first uh, question is, um, Alex, you immediately jump into the story with ugly scenes of the Croatian fascists, Ustasha, right? Yes. Or the military. Um, and they're either murdering Serbians or hauling them off to horrible camps. And there have been several memoirs written about the Holocaust. Um, I'm thinking about Elie Wiesel's Night, because if anybody's read just one memoir, that's the one they've read, or the Diary of Anne Frank. Um, and they begin with descriptions what, of what the normal day-to-day -day life is in that part of the world where they're writing about, um, to, in order to, what I think, is to present a contrast. However, um, yours doesn't have that. Yours jumps right into the action, the, the destruction. And I'm just wondering what made you dis decide to start that way? Well, let me just kind of uh, slightly um, correct your first statement. The majority of the crimes against the Serbs uh, were committed in what is today uh, known as uh, Bosnia and uh, Croatia. At that time, during the Second World War, uh, it was called Independent State of uh, Croatia. In that uh, that part of the land, uh, right. yeah, and uh, but it's, but it's 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 you know it's the geography sometimes doesn't matter. It's the horrendous crime does, and the people that are affected by that. So going back to your question is uh, why did I do that? Is what I did is actually literally extracted five stories from my dad and my grandma, and try to present those stories as they're told to me or to my mom and sort of in a form of an interview. Uh, so this is really an interview of my dad at the time when he was eight years old and being taken away from, from his mother uh, or at the time when my uh, grandma was being taken away to a concentration camp. So it wasn't really, I didn't really try to um, uh, write or draw entire story of his life. These are just the five stories, or actually uh, adding my daughter and my, my story, it's about seven stories that are uh, in like a sh short interviews. And I was joking the other day when I gave the interview to uh, public radio, to Ed Bremer, I says, I'm sort of encroaching on your territory. I'm interviewing my, gram my grandma, or I'm interviewing my father when he was eight years old. So that's why I didn't try to actually ease into the story from that standpoint. I see. So tell me a little bit about your writing style. I noticed that you chose to avoid using the definite article, which makes a text seem to me and probably other people who read it somewhat foreign to native speakers. So what effect were you trying to achieve? Exactly the point that you were trying to make. Um, so <laughs> I've been talking about that. Uh, number one, I focused on the poetry of you know, eight-year-old. Uh, and then I talked with my um, um, chief editor and your friend and my wife, <laughs> Leah Badgley, and we were, we were uh, kind of exchanging thoughts about trying to focus on the originality of the kid telling his story and kind of take the grammar away and just kind of focus on what I hear him saying in Serbian language and try to more of that into English poetry in a way as much as I could. 
So that's how it kind of uh, came a little foreign, mm -hmm. which was actually the goal, to be right. foreign. So, in, and this book starts out, by the way, with um, your father, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Peter, at, at age eight, and then what happens to his mother? That is correct, yes. that is correct. Okay. Yeah, he was he was taken away from uh, his family, and um, I mean it's tragedy. Sadly, this is not the only story in my family. There are many other, uh, my extended family from a Kozara region of Bosnia, which is north uh, western Bosnia, that also has similar stories. The kids were t uh, taken to the camps. Uh, a lot of people being killed in uh, in the camps, and uh, so. Um, to jump into the story now, um, there's a scene where, um, the, the, while the soldiers are abducting Peter, his mother y Yelena shouts, Your name is Peter Babich from the village of Soviak. And it sounds like a mantra to me. And Peter often uses this mantra throughout the story, and Yelena uses it too when she's in some impossible situations. It's, it's using her name. Tell me how you came up with this idea. Well, the first part, um, the first part is what my dad told me that when they were taking taking him away and the other kids away, their mothers would come to the kids and says, "Your name is," so you need to remember who you are and where you're from, because you were whatever at that time. The kids were four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. They needed really to remember because they, they're going to be taken away, and that I I just that part is what my dad told me and I just took that mantra to uh, um, my grandma mm -hmm. and myself and my daughter you know because it's like who you are where you're from uh, it kind of uh, it's so sort of like a tattoo that you have on, on your heart I suppose you know that you carry carry along uh, so yes it is a mantra um, and uh, it's um, I was talking to another uh, friend of mine, you know, how would I name this book and went through all of that and he says, just name it the way that uh, your uh, father remembered. My name is Petr Babic from a village of Sovia. It's in Serbian, it's Moje ime je Petr Babic i sel Sovia. Well, it's very powerful. It really carries the story along and it's real. It's, it is, yeah. it is. That's, that, that's what... Uh, you say it's real, it's suddenly go shaky, but yeah, it's, it's real. Um, although Peter is has very little control of his situation, maybe none, in fact, mm. um, he feels a sense of shame for being different from the other kids, um, from having become skinny and sickly, and for not having been chosen to join the grown-up partisans who were fighting against the fascists. And this was because he was too scrawny. This sense of shame comes up a lot when we explore um, those who are forced into powerlessness. And we somehow come to blame ourselves uh, for finding ourselves in these situations. And what are your thoughts about that, whether as part of the story or just generally? You know, um, excellent question. Um, I recently had a couple of conversations exactly on that topic. One of my friends who is Polish and whose family, whose grandfather was from the Baltics and he was killed by the Soviet soldiers at that time. And she told me that her father never wanted to talk about it. It was always like, oh, just let's forget about it. Another friend uh, recently who told me that her um, father was a part of the um, American GIs that liberated one of the concentration camps and was the, you know, he saw what, like, it looked like uh, without you know with all the crimes that happened. He also never wanted to talk about it. There is a certain shock that exists, you know, that uh, the people just know it is so powerful that I may want to mourn. I want to sit down and pray, but I don't want to celebrate in the sense of building a big monuments. And uh, I also want to say my you know a friend of mine saying maybe this is like a, what in new days we equate to uh, Facebook effects, when we post uh, only happy faces and interesting things. Uh, tragedies, not so much, because there is maybe, we need to put more thought and more heart in how do we, how do we um, remember tragedies. And you know, my, my dad just simply, later on, he didn't really want to talk about it, because 
he thought that in a political context, that can be used in a, in a bad way that someone was saying, for example, oh, how's it rigged the camp? Well, not really, because you left a lot of kids back. So he just was like, it is great that you have monuments and all that, but just I would like to be quiet. I bet there's a lot of people like that. I There's a, a scene in the story where a soldier is literally saving Elena's life, mm -hmm. and it's um, at great risk to him. Um, tell us about the scene and its meaning to you. You know, um, the first time I heard about that, um, I was a kid, and my grandma was sort of, I, I, at that time, was like, it sounded to me like she's bragging about it. It was like, you know, and I didn't really understand the context or... And then later on, when I was talking about it with uh, my mother and my aunt, I was like, and I was like, wow. So I view that as a kind of a um, hope, where even within the evil that is happening, there is that little bit of a heart that can help you, and that can, um, you know, uh, save my grandma. You know, and and actually even later on when she was uh, she was able to walk back to the Bosnia and. Uh, and uh, she, the biggest help she got is from a Croatian family in some of the villages that hit her over there and gave her uh, food. And she always said more than a food, what really mattered was nice, kind words from those people that helped me. So even within that darkness and that kind of like, you know, there is this little star that gives us, gives us a hope that yeah. uh, not always bad. Yeah, we, we sometimes also paint a whole group of people as the enemy and actually... <laughs> It's, it's really the, the political um, entity that's controlling it, and you will find brave people. Exactly. Who will stand up, and it's good to remember that kind of hope. So the book is part graphic novel and part text. It's not really a novel. I said graphic novel because we're so used to saying that, but it's, it's obviously real. But um, how did you come up with this idea of text and, and um, graphic? Yeah, uh, about a terminology. Recently I heard uh, this term called uh, sequential art from a T. Andrew Wall that teaches graphic novel at Everett Community College. But uh, talking about idea, um, Initially, um, um, I'll, I thank uh, kids from uh, high schoolers from Snohomish High School. Um, when I was in, uh, I was in visiting Yad Vashem Museum of the Holocaust and uh, uh, one of the concentration camps where Yana was able to escape called Yasinot. And I was just looking at that or taking a picture of that low, um, name that was written in, in uh, um, uh, Latin and in Hebrew. And, uh, and uh, my daughter called me. And says, hey, Dad, you know, uh, in, in my, um, my school, they're going to be talking about a, it'll be a panel about a Second World War. And most of the American GIs are dying. So we don't have enough panelists to talk about experience of the Second World War. So I know, obviously, you're not old enough that you've experienced that. However, you have this wonderful story about our family. Do you want to come? So I did. And I was prepared in a way. I had a pictures, map, story. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't have a high expectations from my kids, you know, from a high schoolers. However, they're very engaged. Some of them are, were tearing up. They were looking at me. They're asking a lot of questions. So that was all great. Okay. About a few weeks after that, I received this, like, thick envelope like this from a Snohomish High School with all the letters. And some of the letters were actually drawings of the kids that listened to my story. So they were drawing. So it, that story was such, it made such an impact on them. They actually made their drawings. They made a sketches. They made ideas. A lot of them says, you should write a book. And I was, when I was looking at these drawings, I says, no, I should write a graphic novel. Or, or actually, in my case, I should do both. I should draw and I should write the story on the side. So that's how idea came to me. 
So it's interesting how you impacted the students and then they impacted you. Absolutely. So was maybe that, even more, maybe even more. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I've ever done, I would have ever done something like this if I didn't have that reaction from the kids that have, quite frankly, nothing to do with the Balkans. But, uh, you know, just uh, kids from school, open-minded, listening to the story. And just politics aside, ju just the de uh, uh, what happened to the child and the uh, mother. And, you know, that, sure, everyone is, is someone's child. And so it, it is, uh, it was, it was uh, really uh, emotional. Storytelling, I find, is really um, uh, one of the best ways to... Um, Teach empathy. Yeah, it's yeah. I I absolutely agree. Um, where did you get your ideas for the actual frames in the book? And I'm wondering, um, did are they from photographs? Did you just think? creatively think some up. And by the way, Alexander is also an, has been an artist for many years, a painter and do you do, do, do things other than painting? I, I did write stories, but um, uh, in Serbian language. Uh -huh. I do painting, prints, um, collages, and uh, so different things. So the frames, this is my first published graphic novel. I've never done that. Um, th there are a few people that inspired me. Um, really to kind of a, I always liked comic books and graphic novels but what I've seen in a couple of people like um, you know Art Spiegelman in his famous book Mouse you, I'm sure you know that mm -hmm. that you look at the mouse as uh, and and the evil um, uh, foxes and wolves and being Nazis versus Jews at that time but you kind of only read book through half of it until you realize those are real people and uh um, another great name is Joe Sacco that um, wrote books or uh, made drawings for the books about Palestine and, uh, and the others. Um, uh, Ray Fox, it's a Canadian artist where I kind of got an idea about a, a certain sequential art that he does. Um, but, you know, images within those squares either came from my mind, came from uh, museums of the uh, different... Uh, some of them from a Washington DC Museum of Holocaust, some of them from uh, my own family pictures. Mm -hmm. So, um, and a lot of images and symbols. Symbology, I'm big on that. I, I, I had a whole set of uh, paintings that I did once upon a time about the flags, because I, symbols or flags always kind of fascinated me how it can mean um, salvation for one person, it can mean genocide for the other. So it's like, uh, but it, it has an impact for the people that know history and it kind of brings th those human faces and suffering or hope and symbology together and kind of you yeah. bring it together, I guess. When um, creating a work such as this, which takes us to a very dark moment in history, although we've had dark moments since. What do you do to protect yourself from getting too far drawn into it? It is, a, you know, emotional. So my uh, um, joker side of myself, I would like to say alcohol helps, but <laughs> no, not really. Uh, so you kind of have to step away and hinge on those hopeful moments from the book, on a, um, where the story ends. So your previous question about a Ustasha fascist soldier um, or about my grandma finding her son or about my daughter calling me and basically owning the story. So mm -hmm. really the, uh, the story is about family and the story is about my daughter and the story is about you know my wife and the story is about who we are and uh, who I am. So it's like if you focus on that part of the story um, I don't think you'll be taken into a darkness. And there's a happy ending. There's always happy ending. Uh, 
Um, I think we talked a little bit about this, but maybe you have more to say. In the addendum to the book, uh, you mentioned that your father said that suffering cannot be celebrated. Um, and this was his expo explanation for why he, why he did not attend any memorial events. So what I'm interested in is, is the difference and your opinions about these differences or contrasts between remembering, commemorating, and celebrating. Um, it's really a tough, it is really, I, I thought about it a lot, even as a young man, uh, when I found out that he was invited from uh, a society of the surviving children from a Khosra region. And I was trying to say, why don't you want to go? You survive, you won. And uh, um, I think it's really personal, mm -hmm. and it really depends who you are, um, and where do you find this um, content, if possible, or just peace. Um, I think he he didn't want to participate in many of these events because, as I mentioned previously, he didn't want to be drawn in any, any political discussion. Yeah. Who is a good guy? Who is a bad guy? I mean, it was obvious what it is. And he just wanted to look at the people as they are. He didn't want to label <clears throat> entire creation nation as a fascist, you know, or he, he, he had a very good friend. Uh, um, there were parts of Catholic clergy, you know, after the war. So uh, see, see, he wanted to focus on the positives. And sometimes when you are a part of the um, black and white and kind of a um, economics of humanity, whatever the word is, I'm, I just invented this, I guess. So if, if you're just trying to put yourself there, um, you tend to participate in that bad, bad stuff. And, and kind of later, sooner or later, that um, grief and pain will come back. Mm -hmm. And you, you won't have a re redemption. But that's just my, my thought of, I tried to ex it's extract this thought, from him. Worth, but, worth um, hearing about and worth yeah. discussion. So that's the end of the official interview. What I want to ask you now is um, whether you have any other thoughts. Share. No, I think this was a learning experience for me. I'd like to thank all my friends and family that helped me to publish this book. Um, I think uh, just uh, talking to the people, their uh, different experience. I learned a lot. I actually even found subsequently after publishing the book, I think I found a picture of my dad in Stara Gradishka camp. Uh, there was, uh, a, I found it in Washington, D.C. Mu wow. Mu Museum of Genocide. And it was, uh, uh, I also met a lot of people from, um, graphic novel section um, and uh, did some interviews and uh, it was it was really a learning experience that kind of opened this whole different uh, areas for me that um, I'm certainly happy to, to preserve the story of my family um, but I'm I'm also um, excited about this uh, you know how do we uh, maybe uh, figuratively speaking make this book that is black now make it uh, uh, white or, or pink or happy in the future and maybe this is the first step to this is a, another yeah. way of moving in that direction yeah. how can people get a hold of the book so uh the book is available on amazon.com and barnes and noble and um different if you are in snohomish there are upper, uppercase bookshop is certainly around here um, and uh, i am working on a translation uh, into serbian so at that time the book will be available in uh, countries of the former Yugoslavia. Thank you so much for the interview. And those of you watching, thank you for watching. And um, please do find the book. It is important. Thank you.